the modern diet is the reason why people all over the world are fatter and sicker than ever before. In this video, I'm looking at five graphs that clearly show why things have turned out the way they have. Sometimes we have to face the truth. Number one, added fat intake has spiked dramatically, mainly from vegetable oils. The total amount of fat we consume has increased a lot over the past century. You can see the red line shows total added fat intake. Now in the 2000s, it was around 50 pounds per person per year, whereas it was much closer to 30 pounds per person per year for most of the century. Fat is the most calorie dense nutrient, so that's a heck of a lot of extra calories each person is eating per year. Uh, you can also see from the blue line, the types of added fats we eat have shifted from animal fats like butter, tallow, and lard. We're now eating way more vegetable and, and seed oils instead, which is shown uh, by the green line. That's things like soybean, corn, canola oil, and sunflower oil. Interestingly, this graph and several others all show that total and added fat intake did not decline at all when the low-fat guidelines were introduced in the 1970s. They all show that fat intake just kept on increasing, which indicates that A, the low-fat guidelines didn't work particularly well, and B, nobody ever reduced their fat intake. So we can't blame a low-fat diet for the current health problems because nobody was eating a low-fat diet. Number two, vegetable oils have altered the fatty acid composition of our bodies. And this is really fascinating, also very concerning. Uh, but Dr. Stefan Guillenet, who makes many of these great graphs, uh, found that the amount of seed oils, vegetable oils that we're consuming is so high that it's actually altered the fatty acid composition uh, in our bodies. The dots in this graph show the average percent of linoleic acid found in human fat tissue at different time points. Now linoleic acid is a type of omega-6 fat rich in vegetable and seed oils. Uh, and there is a really strong correlation between the linoleic acid we eat and the linoleic acid in our fat tissue. The percentage has more than doubled since the 1960s. The most commonly consumed vegetable oil in the US is soybean oil, which accounted for about 7% of calories in the US diet in 1999, which is a lot. Most don't realize that this increase is coming from the processed and junk foods that we eat, uh, which typically contain large amounts of vegetable oil. So even if you don't think you eat vegetable oil much, uh, you do. Notice how influential this high amount of omega-6 fats in our tissue is to our health uh, is a hotly debated topic. Uh, all we do know is that it's definitely not a natural amount to have. Number three, consumption of soda and fruit juice has increased dramatically. Increased fat is certainly not the only problem, but increased sugar as well. The brain doesn't register liquid sugar calories in the same way it registers calories from solid foods. So even though we've consumed the liquid calories, we're still not satiated. We feel like we haven't eaten anything, so then we eat food calories from solid foods as well. And this combination is pretty much the reason why calorie intake has increased so much. This graph shows the uh, beverage consumption of US adults from the late 70s up until the mid 2000s uh, based on USDA data. So you can see that uh, the green line, fruit drinks, which is like juice, uh, remained quite consistent until the 90s, and then it went up quite a little bit. Uh, milk has remained consistent. Uh, so the calories we get from milk uh, is about the same the whole way through. The red line is non-diet soda. That means sugar-sweetened beverages or soft drinks. And you can see they were gradually increasing and then in the 90s especially um, have gone up. And it's kind of plateaued now, which is good. But that's largely where a lot of our extra calories have come from. It's no surprise that one study even found that in children, each daily serving of sugar-sweetened beverages is linked to a 60% increased risk of obesity. Number four, people are eating more junk food than ever. Now we all know this to be true, but most of us don't appreciate the scale of it. Now this graph shows how the US population changed its eating habits in the past 120 to 130 years. Now at the turn of the 20th century, uh, over 90% of meals were simple home-cooked meals uh, shown in green. Now less than 10% was other foods shown in blue. By around 2009, about half of what we ate was home cooked food. And you can see the emergence of fast food in our diet shown in red. Now this graph actually underestimates the true change because a lot of what people are eating at home these days is junk as well, compared to what they would have had in the year 1900. Number five, increased calorie intake overall. So we've seen from these graphs that people are consistently eating more and more fat, uh, particularly from vegetable oils found in junk food, processed foods. Uh, we're eating more carbs, and that comes from the sugar 
uh, added sugars in soft drinks, juices, and also junk food. And our protein intake has only increased ever so slightly. Fortunately, it's really hard to overeat protein because um, of how satiating it is. But of course, this means that overall, our total calorie intake has increased a lot. Although sources vary on the exact figures, it seems the average person eats around 400 additional calories per day since the 1960s and 70s. You can see intake used to be around 2100 calories per day and is now closer to 2700 per day. Now this largely explains the rise in obesity and is pretty much the biggest negative trend in the modern diet. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the Authority in Nutrition YouTube channel, uh, be sure to click that red button below the video so then you can get notified when our new videos like this one get published.